Juan Archuleta, 32 years old. Patchy Mix, 26 years old. He's got a little bit of a reach advantage. A little bit of a reach advantage. You take a look at those records. That is telling you everything you need to know. Patchy Mix, 13-0 as a pro, 12-0 as an amateur. He's never been defeated in an MMA cage. Juan Archuleta would love to change that right here, right now. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Bellator MMA live on Paramount Network from Mohegan Sun Arena. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the vacant Bellator Bantamweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation Chairman James ah, Gessner, President of Sports and Entertainment Mr. Okay. Tom Cantone, awesome floor, Supervising right. at Cade Side Brendan right. Kaliwa right. and yep. Director Mike Mazzulli. And now, first introducing the Blue Corner at 5'11", weighing in 135 pounds even in his first Bellator World title fight. He enters as an undefeated professional, 13 victories with no defeats. By way of Albuquerque, New Mexico, he fights out of Angola, New oh York, God! presenting oh Patchy No Love Mix. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot seven, weighing in 134.6 pounds. After his recent featherweight world title challenge, he's back at bantamweight and stands with 24 professional victories, just two losses. Fighting out of Hesperia, California, introducing Juan the Spaniard Archuleta. In charge of the action, your referee, Jason Herzog. Fighters gone over the rules in the back. There were no final questions from you, Blue. No, there were sir. no final questions no, from you, Red. If you want to touch gloves, right, I'm not ready to fight. All right, late. baby, let's get it. I like it. Both of these men are great competitors. 24 wins for Archuleta. As John said, 13 and 0 for Patchy Mix. One man will leave with that gold belt First round, around buddy, their you waist. Buddy, are you ready? Fight! Here we go! Go! Tonight's Fight Clock brought to you by Geico Archuleta in the red gloves. The natural southpaw patchy mix in the blue gloves. He will switch his stance. It's normal for Archuleta to use a lot of movement. He uses his feet, moves himself in and out. That is one of the things that makes him difficult to time and difficult to hit. Not only that, but he switches his stance so much. And this is exactly what he didn't want to do, was overcommit on a strike and end up in this position like I talked about with the body lock. That was actually a nice job of him getting his back to the fence from that position since Apache got that double underhooks with that body lock. That's a bad position. He can be elevated and brought down. John, all the talking about we used to train together. Talk, One saying, oh, yeah, I got the better of them. Juan admitting it, but guess what? We're going to see who's better now. And I'm so excited to see <laughs> what's going to happen. Do not grab them. Talk is talk. doesn't matter. You've you got, you got to make these things work in the cage. doesn't matter what you can do in a training man. I, I, I don't know how many times you know, I used to own my own gym. Guys would come in there and some people that would work out with a professional partner, oh, he's not that good. Really, you're not being punched in the face. There's a big difference. Well, we just saw that with Neiman Gracie. Like, his style of jiu-jitsu is different than, the, like, a competition style where he's able to get off. But most top black belts that just train strictly for competition style, you hit them one or two times, they become white belts really fast. <laughs> yep, it's true. There you go. That didn't happen with Neiman, by the way. Well, and what you, and what you just saw, there, there's a lot going on right here. And Apache has worked for this takedown. He's had the ability to get it with those double underhooks. He's got Juan to his butt, but he's not been in a position to do anything with it. And Juan has got himself back up, and Patchy's now working to get him back down to the ground. There it is. Beautiful. Step over. Step over. Step over. Keep your hips up. Patchy trying to extend that leg. Yes. Juan with a nice cross face there to get, make sure he's pushing him off. Body, body shots yeah, missed with body. the uppercut it's on the exit. But it was nice Patrick body shots on the exit. Yes. And you're taking a look at all of that work that Patchy did and really what, what did he achieve with it. That's the difference. 
He's got to nice make one, one pay in those positions. And Archuleta just connected with the right hand. Well, what Patchy needs to not do throughout this fight is put his head down and just wait for Juan to throw punches. He's good? waiting for Juan to get in within range so he could try to grab him. And he had his head straight down. That's not where you want to be with Juan Archuleta. We saw the knockout power and all the highlights rolling up to this. Beautiful work. Good job. That dude walk out. Knockouts in his career. Very good. Three minutes into a potential 25-minute yeah. championship fight. Overextended, right into a mistake, and Apache's taking advantage of him. Now he's on the back. There we go. Got to keep that chin tucked. There's that figure four body lock around the body waist that I talked about. This is where he does most of his work. He gets to the back or he gets to the, the arm and guillotine, and he just locks that figure four around. And guys have a hard time. And this also does not favor Juan because he can't roll to the right where he needs to to try to unlock that. You're exactly right. And one of the things that makes Patchy very dangerous is he doesn't just go for the neck. He will go for the arm from this position. He will go for things like leg locks, Sulo F stretches. He's got a big arsenal when it comes to submission game. Archuleta fighting it off so far. This is where he needs to be right here. I know he still has the figure four lock, but see how Juan has double wrist control and he took the arm and he over put it the to the head. offside. That's exactly what he needs to do, but he needs to unlock that figure four first. Well, at least now he's in a position where he can turn his body to the right, put that figure four with that foot to the ground, which will actually increase the space for him to turn with it. Also, too, Patchy thinks he's, it feels like he's in a good position. You guys are watching home, but his neck being against the fence keeps him from being able to arch his, his hips into Juan's back. He was to able to get to lock the choke. That fight five and a half years ago, in which Archuleta was submitted, he was, in Joe Daddy's words, blowing him up. Joe Daddy counted the elbows. He said there were 36. And Juan said he just made a mistake, and that's all it took. He cannot make a mistake against Patchy Mix. What you guys need to pay attention to is how Patchy is switching his figure forward from side to side, and that comes from him having the long limbs to be able to do that. And that's just top, top jiu-jitsu skill right there. Final 10 seconds of round one of our Phantomweight World Championship fight. In the mouth. Watch back there. This one is all about Bellator gold. In the corner of Juan Archuleta, TJ Dillashaw ready? said, you you're, you're lunging. You're lunging, and you guys alluded to it. That's how Patchy Mix put him in a little bit of danger there. Josh alluded to that. I want to make sure that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, though. TJ, TJ pointed it out. <laughs> a little nonverbal going on between John and Josh. But what's going to happen in this is Juan has made it very clear that he knows that in the first round, maybe even two, that Patchy will be there. Sure. He needs to avoid the submission and making big mistakes. I think his corner will just talk him through that. I think as the fight goes on, we're going to see Patchy start to slow down a little bit and, start, and not be able to use as much strength. And Juan talked about that, taking him into the deep waters where Patchy hasn't been before. We're not there yet, though. Please be careful of that inverted triangle. Round two. What he needs to do, Juan needs to open up that right elbow, and that'll help clear the unlocking of it. He's done it. There you go. So he'll do is he'll take one of his arms and reach back around his hips and try and spin it in, in between his legs so he can take his back. But while doing that, he's got to be careful that Patchy doesn't roll underneath and try to attack a knee bar. Well, he could roll for it. Right now, he's not in a position he's going to be able to roll for that leg based upon where his head's at and where those legs are at. Patchy needs to figure out there comes a point where I need to get myself out of the position I'm in because it's not going to work for me. But right now, he's, he's into that reverse guard position where there are leg locks available. There's a lot of things that he can try to do. No, but what I'm talking about is when Juan goes to sit up and reach around, he'll stand a little bit, and that'll open up the legs a tiny bit. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, let's go. Patchy Mix, Jackson Wink MMA. They've had a lot of gold and a lot of champions come out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. What you're watching here is a chess match. Yes. I was going to say, we've got kinetic chess going on right now, Josh. So Juan's trying to avoid standing up because he doesn't want him to come underneath and try to attack the knee bar or some sort of leg lock that we've seen earlier tonight. 
play. Tiki and, as I mentioned, T.J. Dillashaw in the corner of Archuleta. Of course, Greg Jackson, Mike Winklejohn, the leaders in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Brandon Gibson. Good transition. Great job by Patchy to move himself into taking Juan's back. Back to that figure four, John. Well, he's great with the figure four. He controls the body so well with the figure four, and he always takes that foot that he's locking it down with, and you'll see him bring it inside of the legs to hold on outside of the leg. He is very long when we're talking about the inseam and his ability to wrap that leg around a guy that's only 135 pounds. Oh, he's got a lot of space. Mike Goldberg, Josh Thompson, Big John McCarthy, Jen Brown, Chael Sonnen. This is round two of our main event for the Bantamweight World Championship. Juan Archuleta and Patchy Mix. Patchy Mix, 13 and 0. Juan Archuleta, 24 and 2. Patchy Mix looking for another submission finish. Beautiful job with the switch of that figure four. Notice that the figure four is always with the foot up. Yeah, the good side, tough. right? That makes it very tough to get out of it. Patchy is great at switching that thing when he needs to to make sure that he has the ability to create the pressure to hold on to it. This is not where I want to see Juan, though, because right now Patchy can choke him from both sides. He needs to pick a side, like I continue to say, because then you only have to worry about defending one side. There you go, Juan. Now he's got to be careful. You gotta watch out for that triangle right off the bat. Juan needs to take away that left arm. Good knee. That was a great knee. Trying to break him down, which is what Juan Archuleta told us is his strategy. Well, Juan Archuleta has been going to the body even when this round started. Look at all the body shots yes. that he was landing. And he's continued to do that when he's had the, the ability to actually land a strike. He's going after that body, and there's a reason. He believes going into deep waters, he's going to be able to get Patchy tired and get it. There was that arm and guillotine he jumped to, and then he went right to his next transition. That's the problem with dealing with guys that are really good at jiu-jitsu is they have a sequence that they use, and they use it every single day against guys they train with every single day. And if it works on them, it pretty much will work on your opponent. Archuleta doing a nice job, and he's going to finish strong here in round two. It's a heavy ground and pound. Couple shots to the back of the head, Jeff. There, John. Just missed with that hammer fist. 15 submissions as an amateur, nine submissions as a professional. We're gonna head to round number three of our title fight. Keep picking your shots. Yes, you are. Yeah. Championship mentality tells you that I do not have to win this fight in the first, second, third round. I get five rounds of watch these body shots. This is what Juan Archuleta's plan is. If I take Fight. that body and I put holes in that gas tank, when it comes to the fourth and fifth round, that's when you're going to see me take him out. But it's two love patchy mix, John, right? In my mind, I've got patchy mix up, two love. Josh? Well, I have a two love as well, but look at right now. Patchy looks like he's slowing down quite a bit. The push kick to the thigh, the, the punches, the combinations are coming out a little bit slower and labored. Patchy mix, 13 and oh, nine wins by submission. Three times he's gone, 15 minutes. Look at every time you're watching Juan Archuleta come in and land shots, he is at least landing a body shot. There he goes again, body shot, body shot. Those body shots are going to add up. That's like putting money in the bank. Archuleta. Of course, doing his strength and conditioning okay. with Sam Calavita. Okay. Yes. And yes. again, you can see the strategy for Archuleta. I have to That's agree. I feel like he, Juan looks phenomenal at this okay. weight class. Yes. He's handling he's handling the reach, the range, the size of Patchy Mix. If you guys don't know, Patchy Mix is a very big 135 pounder. Yeah, all the way, all the way. Snap it. Round three of our championship fight. When we talk about you know fight IQ and getting a fighter to understand, hey, you don't have to win this thing right away. You don't have to win it in the first round. You don't have to win it in the second round. You have 25 minutes to win this fight. That's the difference that you're seeing right now in these two individuals. Juan Archuleta is looking to take this thing into deep waters. Patchy Mix is looking to end this fight at any moment that he can with a submission. 
And every I moment that it goes up. by, they get that's sweatier, that's things get harder, your, your, your muscles get more tired, it's it's your grip shot. gets looser, all those things happen. Juan Archuleta is ripping that body. In fights scheduled for 25 minutes, as I mentioned earlier, the three fights, all wins by submission for Patchy. Two in the first, one in the third. The fight with Patricio Pitbull was a big learning experience for him. And as we're looking at the striking stats here, you can see, I mean, you've got Juan Archuleta picking him apart. But John, nothing extremely hard has landed. The body shots have landed. And those, and even though they don't sound hard, they are hard and they do hurt. And they do start paying dividends in the later rounds. They just affect your breathing pattern. You, know, you get hit to the body, and so then you go to take that breath, and it's not quite the same. Your diaphragm's not working the same. You don't get that full breath of air. Yeah, there we go. We that one hurt. But I talked about my and my keys to victory, and part of it was that Juan Archuleta needs to stay on his bike, and that's exactly what he's doing now. He's on his bike, picking and choosing his shots, not giving Patchy Mix a target to shoot on. Archuleta said of that fight against Patricio Pitbull that he didn't find his groove until the third round, and that in the end he beat himself mentally. Right now he's finding his groove in the third again. Not a lot of guys find their groove against Patricio Pitbull. Just fair. Just be honest. Not a lot of guys go 25 minutes no, that's with Patricio Pitbull either. But Juan's finding his mark, whether it's to the body or to the head against Patchy Mix. And Patchy's kind of just standing in the range, but not, he hasn't looked like he's committed to a takedown just yet. 90 seconds remaining in round three. Much different looking round than the first two, to say the least. But yes. we've seen that Juan can do this for five rounds. One he can round kick and move. And he'll mix in the wrestling as well, which will make Patchy even more tired because he'll be able to ankle pick like John was pointing out in his telestrate. That's your sketch. Nice body shot there yes. in a row. Yes. He's throwing those body shots from the canvas. Yeah, and see, and, and a big part of what you're seeing right now, a lot of people are seeing Patchy Mix being aggressive, coming with pressure, and they're like, "Well, he's the one that's coming forward." Juan Archuleta is the one that's landing the better shots in this round. It does not matter who is going forward; it matters who is landing the cleaner shots. And that is right now in this round, it's Juan Archuleta. Oh, big right hand! Nice left hand over the top. Outstanding striking here in round three for the Spaniard. See a little bit of that frustration on Patchy Mix's yes, face. Yes, we do. We have got ourselves a fight. And that is never good, John. Nope. Ten seconds. We will head to the championship round. Watch Take a look at the body shots here. Every, every time that he came down. in, body shot, he body shot, he's away. doing everything he can to attack that body as much as possible. Here comes a big right hand. You see the straight, right into the chin, comes down. Big left hand off of this one right here, over the top, right to the side of the temple. Not a ton of power on it, but a clean shot. And you see that Mix miss, misses his off of it. In that round, very clear that Archuleta had the better strike. John, you talked about patience, and this is what Juan's doing right now. You touched him with the right hand, was patient with it, didn't try to rush anything. Touch him with the left hook, patience. Stay back. Fourth round, Fight, are you ready? Fight, are you ready? Fight! Championship rounds. This is a first for Patchy Mix. He has never been in a round number four. Archuleta has gone 25 minutes three times in his career. He's two and one. That one was Patricio. He also has a fourth round finish by knockout on his ledger. And he got round three. So it's now 2-1, Patchy. At least on our unofficial. Correct. From the big brain to Big John. What I'm, I'm getting a little, I'm a little concerned about is that Patchy's not even trying to get the takedown. 
So he's, get, he's he's not in range. He's got to use that push kick to make Juan have something to get past. Because right now Juan's just picking him apart, stepping in at, in and out whenever he would like. But there's no takedown attempts right now. I feel like Patchy's slow down and trying to get those takedown attempts. Well, as we, as we talked about in those keys to victory, when you brought up one of my things was patience, patience, patience. Because when you're a young fighter and everything you've done in all your fights has, has worked, it's been successful, how are you going to deal with your opponent when everything you're doing is not successful. You've got to remain still patient and take your time and don't get frustrated. And I think we're seeing a little bit of frustration sometimes out of Patchy Mix. And Juan Archuleta said, and I quote, looking for him to slow down in the fourth and the fifth, and he connects with a jab. What Juan did there a second ago was he hit him with the jab and then he drugged the right hook across the body of Patchy and hit him to the body. Very nicely done. It's the level changes in his stand-up that's, I believe, is giving Patchy some problems. Patchy's very tall for a bantamweight. And sometimes when you have a guy, you're used to punching down a little bit, but when a guy's really bending down at the waist and digging shots, it's not an easy thing to count. I want to see more of that. If you're going to stay on your feet, let let one come to you well, and then push kick him because you know if one over commits like he did in the first round the takedown becomes a little easier to get and the and the big part is if you want this fight to go to the ground so utilize those kicks let him try to catch the kick let him go for the takedown let's let's get to the ground like he is right now this is where you want to be I gotta tell you, I, I'm, I didn't like that. Only the fact that I was waiting for one of you guys to say it. I was waiting for one of you guys to say it. Watch out. the head. Watch the head. Time. He came under the door. I don't know. Time. He came under the Time. Door. Right here. Right here. Let's watch it on the replay. How are we doing here? Yeah. So that blocked it. He blocked it. Yeah. It's because I blocked it. Right here. No coaching. No coaching. You're good. Yeah. No, that would have, even that, if it wasn't blocked, right it would have been to the First chest, up. right, John? That is a kick okay. that is legal. Right. It's a like legal it kick. To me. He can kick him to the legal. body. Like he can kick illegal. him to the you arm. That is a legal kick. Patchy Mix got a break that he did not deserve off of that. But was it his fault? No, okay. not at all. Archuleta right away said, that, no, it was the body. It was the body. It was. The fight continues. And Juan Archuleta continues to pick Patchy Mix apart. It is very tough to be in there and see things at real speed and catch everything because your eyes have to be on that spot. But a fighter who is grounded is allowed to be kicked to the body or kneed to the body by his opponent. I like what Patchy's doing right now. He threw a couple head kicks or up by the head a little bit and it's actually changed a little bit of what Juan was doing. So again, round four, like the last round, a Juan Archuleta type round after Patchy looked for an early finish in the first 10 minutes and this is one of this fight. When you're Patchy mixed, sometimes you get the feeling like you're winning the round because I'm going forward, I'm being the aggressor. That is not getting you this round. It's who's landing the cleaner blows because if the judges can see who is landing cleaner blows, they don't go to aggressiveness and they don't go to cage control. Damage. Number one. Patchy's also very young, John, and I think yeah. a little bit of that is also this is going to be a learning experience for him. I, he's still in this fight. There's no doubt no, about no it. No doubt about it. He just got, I think he's, you can tell the frustration because he's talking to him, he's raising his arm, he's changing things up. He's not staying clean with everything he's doing. I didn't doing. see it, go. I didn't see it. And championship experience is certainly on the side of Juan Archuleta. But now he's chasing after him aimlessly, like just. This is what he needs to do, but he needs to do it a little bit more composed. Yeah, he's chasing him and not cutting the, the cage off. There's a difference between cutting the cage and chasing your opponent. And you want to make it to where you're forcing your opponent where you're going to go. Archuleta's footwork is awesome tonight. Fun to watch. But when you train with guys like Cub Swanson, TJ Dillashaw, Lance Palmer, Sayanawad, move a lot. You know? He credits Cub for a lot of his early success and learning about the fight game in and out of the cage. Oh, great combination. Hey, right here. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Right here. Take your time right here. I didn't see it.
Yeah, he got poked in the eye. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. We, there was a moment somewhere in there about a minute, minute and ten, where you saw an uh, exchange, and Juan said that he got poked in the eye. The referee did not see it. Disrupt his rhythm. You say, use that jab. It's not, he doesn't have head movement. Yeah. And you can jab. see that he did get poked in the yeah. eye. It was, a, it was a poke. Hey, hey yeah. just stay on with that jab. That jab's smart. High, yeah. low, high, low with that it's jab, half, right? Half, that ball, halfway, guess what? halfway through the John, line. how do you have it? 2 2? Right now, I have this fight there. dead even. 2 2. Whoever gets the fifth round gets the belt. Let's go. That's what we did. This round is there. Sit back right there. Tommy James. TJ Dillashaw. Juan Archuleta. Patchy Mix. Five Fire round. Fire minutes ready. Ready. remain. Turn. The winner becomes the Bellator Bantamweight World Champion. Yeah. One thing you really have to be impressed with, Josh, that we talked about. How was Patchy Mix going to do if this fight got into deep waters, into that fifth round? And you can see that his conditioning is on point because he's taken a lot of body shots, he's put out a lot of energy, and he is still coming. On that unofficial scorecard, if this fight does go the distance, the winner of this round will walk away with the gold. Tell those body shots hurt because Patrick took his half step back. Yep. Kind of gave him a smirk like those those didn't hurt, which meant they hurt. Oh, he's continuing to pour it on too. You can see he's starting to suck air. You see he's trying to grab air because he cannot get his body to breathe in a normal fashion. That makes his takedown attempt not as effective. Body shots are horrible. Oh my goodness, it's almost John like his precision is precise. He's Almost. Did you just say that? Well, I did, but I was kidding that time. I know. John, we, we talked. Look at the numbers. <laughs> Very impressive oh. by Juan Archuleta. And he's just picking him apart right now on the body. But you talked about what was impressive by Patchy. Him getting into the fifth round, still looking good, still the conditioning's still there, taking all these body shots. What I'm most impressed with, though, is by Juan Archuleta. Of course. He can do his game plan, though. Yes. Not letting the trash talk get to him, not letting all the hype and all these other things get to him. He has stayed on course the whole time. He had a plan. He stuck with a plan. Look at where it's got him so far. He's a four division champion. No. Looking you for the biggest you belt yep. I'm good, I'm good. of his good? professional yep. right. career. Watch your blows. He has been in the pressure cooker, if you will, of title fights many times. A first time to the fifth, a first time to the fourth for Patchy Mix. Archuleta continues to strike dynamically. Big right, like a little uppercut hook that he landed coming out of that turn. What Juan's doing really Beautiful well here left is hook to the body. stepping his foot on the outside of Patchy's lead leg and hit ripping that body, going to the inside on the right side on the right hook and going to the outside on the left hook. Busting him up inside again. So now he knows Patchy's going to cover up with his elbows. Now he's coming up top to the head. He's just beautifully picking this fight apart right now. Past the midway point of the fifth and final round. Straight hand by Patchy. Of this bantamweight title fight. Archuleta in the red. Patchy Mix in the blue. John has it tied at two. So does Josh. With just over two remaining. This is still anyone's fight. I know Juan's winning the first half of this fight, but if Patchy does a couple nice shots, able to do anything, there you go right there. Nice head kick. Patchy coming forward, but he's got to throw. Patchy needs to get a takedown here. That would really help him in solidifying this round if he could get on top. Ears, fighter, ear. Time's ticking, John. Time is ticking, but if you want to let it, you can look and say, well, right now what I'm doing is I'm working towards getting a little bit of a breather so I go into this last minute and a half and just put it all out. Punch back of the head. Keep on working, guys. So, you, know, you can look at it and you can say, well, Patchy's throwing punches. Those are not punches. That's more irritation than anything. We're looking for damage. Well, technically, they are punches, but I get your They're technically. Do not grab the cage. Just grab the cage. Do not that grab kept the cage. Them up. 
but Patchy needs a little sense of urgency with one minute left. He needs to at least threaten some sort of submission here to start thinking that maybe that he gets close, start skewing the judges towards the end of the round. Archuleta has not slowed down at all. Well, I would agree one thing with Josh right here is Juan Archuleta has now got the double underhooks. Do something with it or get yourself out and go back to what was making you successful. Final minute of the fight. Juan's got to make sure he keeps his head up high because, you know, we saw earlier Apache jumped on that army and guillotine right away. Nice elbow. Very nice elbow on the exit. Final 30 seconds. Who will be the new champion? Spin and a miss. I need more. 15 seconds. A little flash of heads. Nice knee up the middle, Juan ripping the body. Nope. They go the distance! Juan Archuleta and Patchy Mix. It's okay, give me a sec. Hold on, man. Be good. Give him more. Spectacular fight. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight, Great fight by both guys. A lot to be learned in that fight. They both show that they were in supreme condition. Five minutes all out. You gotta be impressed. I'll give him a hat. It lived up to the hype. Yeah. There's a lot of hype coming into this fight. It lived up to the hype. The game plan that you could see that Juan Archuleta had, his ability to stick to it is the difference in this fight. And it was the survival mode that he was able to put forth early because Patchy Mix was looking for yet another finish. Well, this is where he was surviving because Patchy was getting that back and he was doing good work. He was getting that body triangle. He was controlling a lot of the action, winning the first couple of rounds the way we looked at it. But it was the game plan of Archuleta and these body shots that he was ripping. Coming in, nice shot up high, going to the body, always making him pay to the body. That was the difference in the fight, in my opinion. Take a look at the final numbers after 25 minutes of fighting inside the Bellator cage. 105 punches landed. One takedown each, the four submission attempts. One Archuleta Apache mix. Now wait for the judges to render their decision. Pretty much, Josh, what Juan Archuleta said he wanted to do, get him into the deep waters up, and see what happens from here. But it was dangerous for the first couple of No rounds. question, but I think Juan knew that was gonna be the case. Yeah, he did, but the fact that he was able to survive for those two rounds was very impressive, and it wasn't so much that he survived. He had to survive in some very, very crap situations. No to be question. Back take and mount, all these situations. I was like, wow, I was very impressed with Juan Archuleta tonight. Two spectacular bantamweights. This will be the first time we'll see Juan fight maybe two fights in one in one weight class. Yeah, <laughs> very true. <laughs> Finally. Just his second fight at 135 in the Bellator cage, but the biggest fight of his career. Will it be the Spaniard or no love? Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone a full five rounds. We go now to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, David Torelli, scores the fight 49 to 46. While judges Brian Miner and Doug Crosby both see the fight the same, 48 to 47. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision. And now the new Bellator Bantamweight World Champion, Juan V. Spanier. Archuleta! Juan Archuleta is the Bellator Bantamweight World Champion. Thank you to both men for a spectacular championship fight. One second. Here's Big John with the new chip. Come here. Juan Archuleta. Cartwheels, backflips. No! 
Simple, simple first question, baby. How does it feel? Oh my God. My family, John, they deserve this. My teammates, they deserve this, man. My country, Spain, where my ancestors come from, the fighting Spanish, the conquistadors, they deserve this. They have fighting spirit. It shows in me, Viva Palayo, Covadonga, the Reconquista is here, baby. Spain, I'm coming and putting this at the feet of the king and queen. Well, I can Most tell you, and glory to God. you deserved it. You put on an outstanding performance. Let's talk about your game plan, because it was obvious that you knew what he could do on the ground and how he was very dangerous in the beginning of the fight. You started attacking the body viciously throughout the fight. Was that your game plan? You know what? Uh, after I lost my pit bull fight, I was so devastated. There was one man that pulled me out of the trenches, and I owe this to him. Cub Swanson, he showed me how to battle through adversity, how to fight someone that was an undefeated jiu-jitsu fighter, stick to a game plan, and it was similar with him and Karan. He said, I promise you, you fight like that, you're walking home with the title. And guess what, Big John? I'm walking home with the title. It's all yours, baby. Congratulations on an incredible performance. Thank you. The new Bantamweight Bellator champion. Back to you, Goldie. Right, guys, we're going to my house cooking on the Traeger grill. My family, I love you. It's my birthday. Best birthday present I could give myself. Thank you, Scott Coker. Thank you, Kogan. Thank you, Big John. Bellator, Viacom. You guys honestly made this happen through the pandemic. Thank you. All the fighters that stepped up to fight and put their family at risk. You guys did a hell of a job. Good job, guys.